So we'll start with the deltoid. Most of you probably heard of the deltoid before you took any kind of anatomy at all. Um, so when using the entire deltoid, you will abduct the shoulder. But if you're just using the anterior fibers, that will cause flexion at the shoulder. And just using the posterior fibers will cause extension of the shoulder. Then above the spine of the scapula is a muscle called the supraspinatus. And the supraspinatus has an insertion point on the superior aspect of the head of the humerus which is why it also causes abduction. Also included on the arm model is the pectoralis major. Uh, you can see the entire thing if you're looking at a torso model, but the reason it's included on the arm model is because its insertion point is on the humerus. That's why it's a humerus mover. So the pectoralis major can pull the humerus forward, so that's flexion at the shoulder. And also because its um, origin is on the body, it will bring it closer to the midline. So adduction at the shoulder. So when we turn the model over um, from the underside, there's the coracobrachialis, which also adducts and flexes at the shoulder. And then also there's the latissimus dorsi. Now, because the latissimus dorsi is on the back, it's not going to cause flexion. It's going to cause extension. But because it's still um, pulling from below, it's still going to pull the humerus closer to the midline, which would be adduction. Moving on to the rotator cuff, before we talk about it while looking at the model, I think this picture is helpful in understanding. So there's four muscles in the rotator cuff, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and the subscapularis. So the supraspinatus does not actually perform any kind of rotation. It's just doing abducting, like I had mentioned previously. However, it's part of the rotator cuff because one, those four muscles together are making a cuff around the head of the humerus. And two, it's assisting the muscles that are actually doing rotation by supporting the humerus um, and keep helping it stay in joint. So the supraspinatus is above the spine of the scapula and the infraspinatus is right below it. And then below the infraspinatus is the teres minor. So you can see they're both inserting very close to each other on the head of the humerus, which is why they both are responsible for lateral rotation. Then below the teres minor is the teres major, which you can also see on the underside. And the teres major is right below the subscapularis. So when you're looking at the infraspinatus and the teres minor, 
and then you see the terrace major is crossing over to the opposite side that's what gives you the hint that it's not going to do lateral rotation it's going to do medial rotation so the subscapularis and the terrace major are doing medial rotation and the infraspinatus and terrace minor are doing lateral rotation okay so now we're moving away from shoulder movers um, up until this point everything we've talked about has been moving the shoulder joint now we're going to talk about things that are moving the elbow so there's the biceps brachii brachialis and then brachioradialis together those all cause flexion at the elbow then on the back of the arm is the triceps brachii which um, you can't see the entire thing here you can only see the medial head and the long head the lateral head is out of sight um, but there's the triceps brachii and also crossing the elbow in the back is the anconius so the triceps brachii and the anconius both cause extension at the elbow all right well that's everything above the elbow i hope that was helpful have a great day and have fun learning